Welcome to Electron Line. After we send 18 spacecraft, or at least attempted to send 18 spacecraft to Venus with very marginal success, the 1970s saw a lot more success. There were fewer missions, but many more of them were successful, as we can see by the check marks that we made on those that were actually tremendously successful. In 1970, Venera, and I'm missing an A here, Venera 7, had a partially successful flight. The parachute failed upon entering into the atmosphere. It came down much faster than they expected. It somewhat crash landed, but it was able to survive the landing. It did topple over on its side, but it was able to send 23 minutes of data, including temperatures recorded on the surface, which were registered to be between 455 Celsius to 475 Celsius, which is right within the range of the temperatures we see on the surface today. In 1970, another Cosmos rocket was launched, but it had another launch failure. And then in 1972, Venera 8 was able to stay on the surface communicating for a total of 50 minutes. That was a record that was tremendous. And then in 1972, we tried to send another, well, not us, but the Soviet Union tried to send another rocket as Cosmos 482, but that also ended in a launch failure. Then. More success in 1973, Mariner 10 on its way to Mercury flew by the planet and took some great color pictures of the cloud cover on the planet. Then in 1975, Venera 9 also made it to the surface and stayed on the surface for 53 minutes and was able to take pictures on the surface and send them back. So we, for the first time, we were able to see what the surface looked like. In 1975, Venera 10 also made it to the surface and stayed on the surface functioning for over an hour. That again was a record. Uh, I don't know if we've broken that record ever since. And we were able to take some beautiful vista pictures of the region around it. We saw some hills. We saw what the surface looked like. It was amazing to see pictures of what it looked like on the surface. In 1978, Venera 11 had a flyby and sent off a, land a lander, part of the, the, the part that they tried to land onto the surface wasn't successful in that the instruments failed and so we got no data back from that. In 1978 we had a Venera 12 that also was a flyby with a lander attached to it but there was a communication failure and again no data received from, from the, uh, the lander. But then in 1978 Pioneer Venus 1 and Venus 2 was sent to Venus 1 to orbit the planet and one to go into the atmosphere and take readings on its way down. It wasn't meant to land and take pictures of the surface. We didn't have uh, the kind of uh, craft that was able to withstand the pressures and the temperatures, but we did get some good readings of the atmosphere of that particular flight. So you can see that we began to take some, some, um, some successes in actually sending spacecraft to study the atmosphere, to land on the surface, to study what's on the surface, to take pictures. So we began to have a really good idea of what was happening on Venus. That's when we got into the 1980s and 1990s, and you can see the number of spacecraft going to Venus went way down from the early 1960s and 70s successes. But at that point, there were some problems in the Soviet Union as the Soviet Union began to break apart into its individual countries. The amount of money was not available. The United States only had one successful flight in the, 19, in the late 1980s, beginning 1990s with the Magellan spacecraft. So let's go and take a look and see what happened during those decades to see what else we discovered. Now the spacecraft, the Magellan spacecraft that took radar pictures of the surface was tremendously successful in giving us a really clear picture of what the entire planet surface looked like, at least from space using those radar images. But let's go and see what we can expect in the decades since the 1970s, those early landings on the surface and the studies of the atmosphere of Venus, what we did after that.